The Disneyland Paris Park is considered by some the best and most beautiful Disney Castle Park in the world, me included. And in the five lands within, many rides immerse you and every guest deeper into the story the park wants to convey. There are many attractions, including some of the best walkthrough attractions ever made, such as the Mysteries of the Nautilus. But today, I'll be ranking every single ride. So, come with me as I attempt this quite hard challenge. Oh boy! Let's start by explaining what counts as a ride. You, the guest, need to enter a vehicle of sorts. This can be a boat, a bigger boat, an even bigger boat, and on top of it all, a flying boat. You need to enter a ride vehicle, and it needs to move you around. So this huge boat doesn't count. If that happens, it's a ride. Now that I got that out of the way, make sure to follow along and watch until the end to find out what I consider to be the best of the best in Disneyland Park in Paris. In number 22 and the weakest ride in the park is the Main Street vehicles. A lot of people pass right by them without noticing they even exist or where to catch them. Boarding one is a really nice experience and allows you to have a different point of view of Main Street USA. If I can, I will totally jump in one and let it take me to the other side of this entrance land. But unfortunately, there's just not a lot to it. I mean, at the end, it's a car that picks you up in one point and drops you off in another. The 21st spot has to go to Lancelot's Carousel. While it's a classic at every Disney castle park, it's very simple and it doesn't have much to it. I mean, it's just a carousel. There's not a lot to say about this one in particular, so let's just jump into the next one. And that is, the teacups at Spots 20. Again, it's a classic Disney attraction, where you always have a lot of fun in. Well, until that one person in your group spins a bit too hard, that is. But it suffers the same problems as the others. It's a classic Disney ride that just doesn't have a lot to it. This one in particular is a flat ride that you can find in most theme parks, so it shouldn't come as a surprise to see it at this point. Next up, the horse-drawn streetcars. Some of you might have forgotten about these or even thought I had incorporated them into the main street vehicles, but this is actually a different ride as it picks you up and drops you off in a different location. So why is this higher in the list? Well, horses. I absolutely love how these are real horse-drawn cars, and on top of it all, all the horses have a huge cast member name tag. What's there not to love about this ride? In number 18 we have, pardon my French, Le Pé de Conte de Fé. This small boat ride is very simple and doesn't have a lot to look at, but it's a cute ride through several mini-scale retellings of animated movies and other fairy tales. What I like about this one is how it's in a very quiet part of the park, and it has the Casey Jr. train steaming through the sides. I feel like this one could use an update with newer movies and some more theming. Other than that, it's a cute ride. Coming at number 17, we have Dumbo the Flying Elephant. Again, it's a classic Disney flat ride that invites you to fly along Dumbo around Fantasyland. Just like the next on the list, it gives you a fantastic vantage point to look around and just soak in all that Fantasyland magic. Orbitron comes in next. This spinner ride in the middle of Discoveryland allows you to control your very own little rocket as you fly around. This is a great spot to get some panoramic views of Discovery Land. At night, it gets even better with all the lights and atmosphere. So, there's a small tip for you. I put this on top of Dumbo because of the amazing theming that comes with it, or should I say, on top of it. It also serves as a fantastic entrance icon for the land. Let's go back to Fantasyland. Here you can find the number 15, Casey Jr., the small circus train. This one has a great story, as it was the first ever roller coaster, yes, it's considered a roller coaster, to have onboard audio. The ride takes you over and around the boat ride we talked about earlier, and gives riders a great view of the smaller area. The trains steal the show, as they're themed to a circus train where all the gear and animals were transported. The last seat is very special, because you go backwards, giving you a completely different experience. At number 14, we have Autopia. 
Here visitors drive their own car through the winding twists and turns of the highway of the future. Little kids are especially very fond of this ride in particular, but anyone can enjoy it. During the years it lost some of its theming, which made it more enjoyable and immersive, but it still is a fun ride, especially because of all the interactivity. Now for number 13, we go back to Fantasyland and into Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, a classic Disney dark ride that has been present in the Disney parks since they first opened. This version still focuses on the much darker element of the movie, after it being changed in Disneyland in Anaheim and replaced in the Magic Kingdom. I don't have anything bad to say about it other than being a simple yet fun dark ride. Staying here for a bit longer, we come across Pinocchio and number 12. This one is quite similar to the last, but immerses us in the story of the little wooden boy. It's once again a classic Disney dark ride, but it's a little more joyful than Snow White. Other than that, I really don't have much more to say about it, so let's just jump to number 11. The Thunder Mesa Riverboat. Welcome to the land of the Wild West, Cowboys and Gold. This is the first entrance of the list for Frontierland and there's a good reason for that. The Molly Brown paddle boat gives riders a tour of the great outdoors and the rivers of the far west. Before, there were two boats, but unfortunately, only this one remains as the once great Mark Twain rots inside a tent. Either way, this ride gives you some amazing views of Frontierland, Big Thunder Mountain and Phantom Manor, and if you look close enough, you might find some caves used by smugglers. Also, on board, you can get close to a long gone ride, which is the River Rogue Killboats. Coming in at number 10, we have this list's most thrilling ride so far, Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril. In this ride, you get to explore a campsite where Indy himself is staying before boarding one of the vehicles. Once you get to the top of the temple, the real adventure begins, as there's no way but down. Featuring the first ever Disney loop, this ride is sure to get your thrilling meter up. You might be asking, why so low on the list? Well, in terms of theming, there's a lot missing, and the ride could use an extensive refurbishment, but it still is a nice adventure. Peter Pan's flight is present in every corner in the world, with the only castle park that doesn't have it being Hong Kong Disneyland. It's a still a classic Disney dark ride, so why is it so high up in the list? Well, it's simple, the ride system. Here, you fly along your favorite characters from the movie in a flying boat. It's also the most popular of the Fantasyland dark rides, and the wait times unfortunately show that. The effects are very simple, yet super effective, truly giving those who ride a feeling of immersion. So that was number 9. Coming at number 8, we have Star Tours. It's not everyone's favorite, but I'm a big fan of the Star Wars universe, and this ride captures that magic very well. You board an interplanetary transport, but things go badly as you're stuck with C-3PO as your pilot. The way there are so many possible storylines makes it so much more interesting, because you never know what you're gonna get and which planets you'll pass by. Staying in Discovery Land for a little longer, we find the number 7. Buzz Lightyear Laser Blast. I feel like I'm a somewhat competitive person, so this shooting ride is perfect. You board a vehicle, pick up your intergalactic gun, and just keep shooting until the end, and hopefully have more points than everyone in your group. If not, that's okay, don't worry. Quick question, have you ever gotten 999999 points? If so, make sure to let me know down below, Galactic Hero. It's a small world gets on the nerves of some people but I think it's one of the must-do classics anywhere in the world. Originally created for a New York's World Fair in 1964, Walt Disney and his team of Imagineers created this boat ride that told the story of many cultures and how they should all coexist. This version of the ride has almost 300 audio animatronic dolls representing children from all around the world as they sing the very famous music in their native languages. And now, after a year and a half long refurbishment, it looks brand new, so it definitely deserves its position. We are now in the top 5 rides in the Disneyland Park. Next up, the Disneyland Railroad. Did you know that the first Disneyland was originally created because of Walt's love for trains? 
This is why there's one in every Disney castle park. Well, except for Shanghai for no apparent reason. Disneyland Paris is no different and features four stations throughout. Main Street, Frontierland, Fantasyland and Discoveryland. When they're all open, you can hop in or out in any of these and they all feature incredible details. From the stained glasses in Main Street to the old western ticket booths in Frontierland. There are a total of four trains, all different from each other and with their own names, details and even different cars. The four steam locomotives are WF Cody, CK Holiday, George Washington and Eureka. There's enough to talk about this ride for a whole video, so let's just jump into number 4. And that is Space Mountain. This was a ride that saved Euro Disney. I made a video all about it and go into detail on everything. Being a superior version of Space Mountain, it blasts guests into the space via a huge cannon on the outside. Inside, you pass through a helix and a corkscrew as you fly along the stars. You see, it was originally themed to the Jules Verne novel From the Earth to the Moon and was a huge breakthrough in roller coasters and storytelling that it received a THEA award for outstanding achievement. Currently, it has what was supposed to be a temporary overlay of Star Wars that has since been stuck there. Hopefully they can remove that overlay, give it some really much needed love and it might go up in the list. For number 3, we must get into a spooky mood because a time for Phantom Manor has arrived. Wait, Phantom Manor on top of Space Mountain, you might ask? To which I reply, yes. Phantom Manor is one of the perfect examples of how Disneyland Paris Imagineers brought an already known attraction, in this case the Haunted Mansion, and not only adapted it, but upgraded it. The story of Phantom Manor ties all of Frontierland together. From the minds of Big Thunder, the town of Thunder Mesa, the native people and their beliefs, and the manor at the top of the hill. You see, it's all connected to this man, Henry Ravenswood, and how he was so greedy that the town and everyone on it passed away in a terrible earthquake. It tells this story in a spooky, mysterious and amazing way. And that's why it's number 3 on the list. We're now in the last two rides, so what will it be? In number two, we have the one and only Pirates of the Caribbean. This ride in particular has a lot of sentimental value to me, but that's not the only reason for this amazing place. Just like with Phantom Manor, Imagineers brought this ride into Paris, but improved it in every way. The queue has so many details, as you enter the fort and then exit into a Caribbean night. The boats truly take you in one of, if not the most immersive rides in the resort, as you explore caverns, a Spanish colonial town, a battle between the city and the cannons from the pirate ship, and just so much more. From the perfect animatronics, with dogs, cats, donkeys, pirates and citizens, and so much more, to the two drops it features, this ride is one of the most memorable ones in the park, and truly deserves to be this high up in the list. And now, in number 1, we have the top of the top, and that is Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. This had to be number 1, and there's good reason for that. Being connected to the storyline of Frontierland is one of the most important phases in that story, but the ride itself is just plain fun. You board a minecart and immediately go down into a tunnel that takes you under the rivers of the far west, and into an island in the middle of the river. Here, you have a thrilling journey filled with sudden dips and sharp turns. With many effects and some cute animals, the story comes alive. And let's not forget the last uphill filled with dynamite. Of course, it all blows up and you then plummet once again into the dark, bad-filled tunnels at a top speed of 65 km an hour, making it the fastest Big Thunder Mountain in the world. I could go on and explore all the details it has, but our time is coming to an end. Now, I ask you, what are your top 3 rides in Disneyland Park Paris? Let me know down below. Make sure you are subscribed as next week I'll be ranking every Walt Disney Studios ride. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram and in our Discord. Links are in the description. And now, as always, thank you for watching 
And that's a wrap.